Welcome to the advanced used walkthrough of the blast gauge system, setting up the tools to track the blast exposure of your personnel. The first step of advanced use of the blast gauge system is to download the software. On your PC, go to www.blastgauge.com software. If you are new to the Blast Gauge website, you'll need to create an account. Account approval may take up to 24 hours. Once your account is approved, you can download the software. If you are going to use a tablet, you'll need to download the Blast Gauge app. If your Blast Gauges have gray labels, download your software from the Apple Store or Google Play, depending on whether your tablet is iOS or Android. If your blast gauges have green labels, download your software from www.blastgauge.com software. This version of the app only works on certain tablets, so if you have problems, contact B3. The second step is to activate your gauges. Open your blast gauge software on a PC and click on the activation tab. Then connect your gauges to your PC using the micro USB port. If you are using three gauges together on one person, then all three gauges must be plugged in and activated together. Gauges will show up in the sidebar. Sub step one, decide if you will be putting the gauges on a person or a structure. You will put the gauges in structure mode if you are testing them without a live person. If gauges are in structure mode, you will need to hold the recessed button to turn them off when you are not recording blasts so that the battery does not die. You will put the gauges in personnel mode only if you are deploying the gauges on a live person. Do not use personnel mode if you are using the gauges on an immobile object or structure. In personnel mode, if a gauge is completely inactive, it will go to sleep in order to save battery. However, the slightest motion of a gauge will keep it awake so that it continues to record blasts. Sub-step 2 adjusts the pressure thresholds. Pressure thresholds control the amount of blast pressure triggering each exposure level. If the blast pressure is in the lowest threshold, the gauge will not register any blast data. If the blast pressure is in the second lowest threshold, the gauge will register basic blast data but will not record the waveform. The gauge will record the full waveform data of any blast event with pressure registering in the moderate or severe thresholds. Do not adjust these thresholds unless you are a very advanced user or have been given orders to do so. Insert your common access card, or CAC, into a CAC reader to set up your information. If you don't have a CAC or are using the gauges for testing, enter unique identifying information. The EDI PI can be any unique identifier. If you are in personnel mode using three gauges per person, then each person gets one unique ID and all three of their gauges have that ID. If you are in structure mode testing the gauges, then each gauge needs its own unique ID. Next, Set the gauges to ON to record blast events. Finally, click ACTIVATE to activate the gauges. Once the gauges are activated, unplug them from the computer. Get your tablet and click START SCAN to test the Bluetooth scan. Now you are ready to attach the gauges. If you are in personnel mode, ensure that all individuals using the system attach the gauge with the H on the back to the base of their helmet, the gauge with the S to their non-firing shoulder, and the gauge with the C to their chest. If you are in structure mode, attach your gauge to your structure or dummy. Step 4 is scanning in the gauges. When personnel return from duty, scan their gauges for blasts. Blast gauges scan via Bluetooth. There is no need to manually connect them to your tablet or pair them to the device. Select Quick Scan to scan in only a summary of the data. This will scan the gauges quickly but will load only the basic blast event information. Select Full Scan to spend a little more time getting the full waveform data. Finally, click Start Scan to retrieve the data from all gauges within about 40 meters. 
Here you can see the different personnel that have been scanned in. You can view the different events that occurred here. If you click on a person, you can see details on their three gauges and all the events that have happened to that specific person. If there is no immediate access to a tablet with the software, press the recessed button on the gauges to check the LED status. A green light means that there was no blast exposure. A flashing green light indicates low blast exposure. A flashing yellow light indicates moderate blast exposure and a flashing red light indicates that severe blast exposure was detected. For anything other than a solid green light, the individual carrying the gauge should see a doctor or medic immediately. If all three of the lights are flashing, the individual does not need to see a doctor or medic. This means that the battery is low or an error condition has been detected. Recover and replace that gauge. You are now ready to use the blast gauge system. You are ready to get the data that can help you keep your men and women safe.